are here with the next video in the mini golf tutorial series inside Construct 3. And we are continuing on with some ball control game mechanics. So let's go back over to the layout and we're going to need to create a couple more sprites. So I'm going to double click and pick sprite. I'm going to place it over here somewhere. And I'm going to pick the resize to be 51 by 51. Zoom in a little. Pick my circle tool. Make sure border is checked and nothing else and our thickness is 1. I'm going to pick a solid white. I'm going to start from the top left. Click and drag all the way to the bottom right till it fills up. And we have a symmetrical circle that is white. And then I'm going to pick a green color. I'm going to make it a little bright. Uh, maybe bring down saturation. Uh, maybe not too much. Uh, maybe the luminance come down a little. Make it a little darker. Okay. So here's what I'm going with. Uh, on my color palette. Make yours whatever color you wish. This is going to be the button that swings the, the club that hits the ball. So I'm going to pick the fill tool and I'm going to fill that in. So now we have a nice little white outline and I'm going to set the, make sure the bounding box or the collision polygon is set to bounding box and then our origin point is going to be uh, right in the middle. Exit out of that I'm going to come up here and I'm going to rename this uh, BTN, that's short for button, underscore swing. So BTN underscore swing. All right. Then I'm going to right click and on that sprite and clone object type, place it below that, double click to go into it, pick my fill tool, and I'm going to pick a red color, a little darker. I actually like that. And I'm just going to fill this green in and keep this white outline. Everything else should be the same because we cloned it. But we can check our bounding box. Our origin points in the middle. Looks good. I'm going to exit out of that. Now I'm going to move uh, these onto the layout. So just somewhere like that. And then we can play. And there they are. We can still move our aim. That looks good. Okay. Uh, oh, with the the red one that we created, highlight that and let's uh, rename this uh, BTN underscore reset. Okay. Now we can jump back over to the event sheet. So I'm going to add an event and I'm going to pick the input touch and I'm going to say on tap object. And that add object is going to be swing. Click OK and done. So whenever I tap on the swing button, let's add an action and go to sprites, ball, and I let's scroll down to physics. We got physics forces and I want to apply, let's see, force, apply a force on object. How about impulse? Apply impulse onto object as if it were suddenly struck. That is what we want but I want to apply the force at an angle. No, impulse at angle. That's what I want. Sorry about that. Apply impulse at angle. Apply an impulse on the object as if it were suddenly struck at an angle. That is what we want. Just like a golf club hitting a golf ball. So let's hit next. So the impulse is going to be, uh, I'm just gonna say 20 for right now. And the angle is going to be the angle that the aiming line is pointing. So I'm going to use another expression here. Uh, I'm, first I'm going to use the object, which is aim. Then I'm going to say aim dot angle. And that should shoot it in the direction of where it is pointing. So click done. Let's try that out. So I can move this. So let's point it just like, I don't know, we'll point it that direction. I'm going to hit the button and two things happen there. If you can tell, one, the aiming, no matter where it's aimed, if I aim it up this way, as soon as I touch on the screen, it moves the aim that direction. And then as soon as I let up 
on the swing button, it shoots it, but it doesn't shoot it where it's pointing. It shoots it at 90 degrees. So we want to go back that 90 degrees. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to add on the end of this minus 90. And then if we play and see, although it has to point wherever I click, it's still pointing or it's still applying the force towards where I have clicked. So that's technically working, <laughs> but we need to take care of that. So this is where our instance variable is going to come into play. If we click on ball, no, I'm sorry, click on aim, we have is aiming. So over here, I'm going to add another condition. So let's double click on this on the far left side of, of this event. And we're going to pick our aim object because that's where the instance variable lives. And go down to compare instance variable is aiming and what we want to say has it been aimed have we aimed and we're going to represent that with a one so one and zero true and false yes or no one so how do we get is aiming to be one because it's going to start out as zero so we need to tell it to become one so let's go ahead and add an event go into our touch object and we want to say whenever our touch has ended so on any touch end and let's add an action and say sprite aim go to set value under instance variables is aiming change it to one and then let's move that up under is in touch so i'm going to make this a little bit uh, more readable by creating some groups. So right click and add a group and I'm going to say uh, aiming and I'm going to put these two in that group and I'm going to move that group up there and then I'm going to create another group. I'm going to call this swing and I'm going to put this one in there and then I'm going to need this one a little bit later. Add group. Let's call it reset. And let's move that up above. So we have aiming, reset, swing. Now I'm going to create a one more group. I'm going to call this player control. And I'm going to take all three of these groups and move them underneath player control. So now we just have this one player control group. And if we tick that down, we have the rest of these showing up. Okay, this is part of the organizing. It makes it a lot easier to read. So let's go back up here to our aiming. And while we're in touch, uh, I want this variable to not be true up here. So I'm going to add another event or another condition to this event. And I'm gonna pick our aim object again and come down to compare and I want to make sure that is aiming is zero if this instance variable is zero which it is and we are in touch we're touching and we're aiming then everything's good as soon as we let up and stop touching our aim line is pointed in whatever direction we left it at and as soon as we quit touching it's gonna to set that variable to one once that variable is one, now this condition can become true if we tap on the button. So if we just go ahead and play that, we can aim it, we hit swing, it looks good. It goes wherever we tell it to go, and we reset the variable so it is now one. We never reset it back to zero, so is in touch and aiming is zero is not true. Even though we're touching, it's still one, so none of this can happen. But we can still hit our swing button and it'll swing all day long. So we want to be able to reset this variable back to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Add action, sprite, aim, 
get its instance variable set value is aiming to zero. Let's play that out, see what that does. So we can aim, I hit the button, I can aim again, because we reset the value. And I can hit that, I can hit it all day long, and, oh, there we go, I broke it for a second. Okay, all right, we still have a lot of work to do on it, but uh, it's looking good, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Come back up here to aiming, and on our is in touch event, let's double click over here on this left side. We're going to add another condition. And we're going to say input touch, and we're going to say is touching, an, uh, is touching object. And we're going to say is touching the swing button. And we're going to press I on the keyboard, that's going to invert it, or you can just right click and go to invert. So what this says is, while we're in touch, we're touching the screen, this aiming variable is zero, and we're not touching the swing button, then we can aim the ball wherever we want. Okay, uh, that looks good for the aim. Let's go ahead and set up the reset. I'm going to add an event to reset. Input touch. And I'm going to say on tap object. And we're going to pick the reset button. And let's add an action. And we're going to pick our aim object. And we're going to set the angle. So set angle. And we're going to use that expression again. We're going to say the angle we want to set is angle parentheses, and this comes up again. It tells you what uh, values it requires to work to use this expression. So we're going to, we want to set the value from our aim object. So aim.x, comma, aim.y, comma, and now where do we want it to go? We want it to go to whole dot x, comma, and whole and you can see the object comes up, dot y, and then in parentheses. And then we learned from earlier that the aim line points 90 degrees uh, away from where we want it. So I'm going to add 90 degrees to this expression. And what this says is when we hit the reset button, it's going to take wherever the aim line is pointing and it's going to point it directly from the image point or the origin point of the aim object and angle it towards the hole plus 90 degrees, which will make it actually point at the hole. So we aim around and if I hit reset, it goes straight to the hole. So let's swing, we go, if I hit reset, it go well it goes where I click first and we'll take care of that in a minute but then it resets to the hole okay that also works one more condition because I want the same thing going on here if we have aimed our uh, our shot we let's say we want that as our shot then I want to make sure that whenever I swing it resets the variable back to zero, uh, or that down here. See, as soon as we tap on swing, it shoots the ball and it sets it to zero. So I don't want to be able to reset as long as it's zero. I want to be able to reset as soon as we uh, start aiming and we have set it to one up here. And with this highlighted, let's double click to add another condition. Then go in your sprite, pick your aim, Scroll down to instance variables and compare an instance variable. And we want to make sure that that aiming is set to one in order for us to be able to use the reset button. So whenever we do hit the reset button, we also want to make things go back to basically the start. So we want all this to be able to happen again. Because if we aim and then I say, oh, I want to reset, we reset and now I can't aim anymore because 
as soon as our touch ended, it set it to one. And that's why this was able to take place because it matched those conditions. But now it's still one because we never set it back to zero. So this says it has to be zero for it to aim. So we're not meeting that condition anymore. So come out of that. Let's add an action, sprite, aim, scroll down to instance variable set value and set it back to zero. All right, I'm gonna go into the debug layout of this now so we can see some of our variables. So I'm gonna pick the aim. Now, if you're using the free version, I don't think you can see uh, everything that I'm seeing, but it's still good to be able to see what's going on even if you don't have it on yours. If you have a subscription version, then uh, get used to using your debugger. It is a lifesaver. So here's our instance variable it is aiming. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this I and then go over to watch. And I can get rid of that. So now this shows just this variable is aiming. So as soon as I click on here and I move this around, I aim it wherever I want. And as soon as I let go, it changes to one. Now, as soon as I hit swing, it changes it to zero. So let's see, I move it around, I let go, is aiming as one. I can hit reset and it moves it back towards the hole and it resets it to zero. And I can swing and good to go. Okay, so we're able to see how that works. That was a lot and it kind of complicated and uh, we're not out of the woods yet. There's a lot more uh, that we have to uh, put into this game. This is, a, this is a pretty long one. I am going to end this video here. We covered a lot and don't forget to save and I'll see you in the next video.